In this video, we're going to talk about Bean Factory. So far, in our examples, we had used application context to load the IVOC container and its beans. But there is something called a Bean Factory, which you can think of it as a predecessor of application context. Or in other words, you can think of it as a previous version of application context, which is lightweight with lesser number of features. And in order to define the Bean Factory, you have to include a couple of instructions. One is to create the resource object and the other is to create the bean factory itself by passing that resource as an argument to its constructor. Now just as we have multiple variants of application context, depending on from where the config file needs to be read, we do have the same stuff in case of bean factory as well. So you would create the resource object accordingly and you would pass it as an argument to bean factory. In here we have a couple of examples to demonstrate the same. If you'd like to read the XML file from the file system, you have to create the following resource and then you would feed that as an argument to bean factory constructor. On the other hand, if you'd like to read the XML file from the class path, then you would use a class path resource to do that job. Likewise, we have many different ways to define the bean factory. You have to choose the one that serves your purpose. But if you're using bean factory over application context, you have to sacrifice a lot of features that Spring offers. For example, you're limited to using only XML config files and you cannot use any annotation based configurations if you're using Bean Factory. Now this is a serious problem, especially if you want to leverage the Spring's auto wiring feature, which we'll talk about in coming chapters. Also Bean Factory would be a problem for internationalization, eventing, etc. Now don't worry about all these terms, we're going to explore all of them in coming chapters. But clearly, application context is a way better option compared to Bean Factory as it supports a lot of features which Bean Factory doesn't. But there could be some cases where Bean Factory might be a better option. For example, say that you're developing an application for a mobile device and at the same time, you realize that you don't need all the features of application context, then you can use Bean Factory because it will offer better performance at the cost of features. Alright, hope it makes sense. See you soon.